Um, so you should be in literacy uh, in 15 or less. So let me talk very briefly about myself because I don't like to talk about myself. Um, I am at the high school. My name is Emily Lahr. I teach in the science department. I teach all of the sciences, although chemistry and physical science make me cry, so I tend to teach biology. Um, but I have a bachelor's in biology, and then I have moved into education through my master's, and now I'm currently working on a curriculum and instruction PhD. What that means in the long run is I clearly see something wrong with the way science teachers are teaching. Um, so what I'm here to do is to help you guys incorporate as much literacy into your classroom as possible, whether you're a science teacher or not. Uh, one of the things that we have issues with our students is that they really can't read. Not only can they not read, but they can't comprehend, they don't know how to tell other students about it, and they don't know why they're doing what they're doing, right? So I'm here to provide strategies as much as I can to help you guys implement quickly. So your content objective for today is to identify literary aspects or literacy aspects and then learn to deepen your students' understanding in the classroom. Well, how are you going to do this? Well, you're going to identify literacy activities for your content design, and then you're going to design activities and lessons to immediately implement. Now, I say immediately. I hate that word. I hate going to professional development and say, oh, you can immediately implement it, because let's be real. You're going to get pounded with a lot of things today. Not always can you implement it. I'm here to provide scaffolds that you can put in so in 15 minutes, if you need to expand that lesson plan, if you need to expand that activity and add literacy into it, that you can. Don't feel overwhelmed. Don't feel like you have to. So let's talk about literacy. So think about this. This is by Jason G, who is a researcher who works a lot with video gaming and technology and play in the classroom. So he said, for example, many students who can write down for a test Newton's laws of motion cannot correctly say how many forces are acting on a coin when it is tossed into the air at the top of its trajectory. And ironically, this is something that can be deduced from Newton's laws. So despite the teaching that we're doing, our students really can't put it into practice. They can't tell you why they're doing what they're doing. But, I mean, we all know one thing. They're pretty good at regurgitating. But we don't want our students to regurgitate. We want them to understand and to apply and to use it in practical real-world experiences. So think about it in this sense. How many times have you taught something and just gone like, okay, yeah, most of my kids get it. we got to move on. I'm, I'm, I'm pressed for time. How many times have a student come up to you have students come up to you and said, I really don't understand it, but if you do the next thing, I'll get it. And then when you go back to do a check with them, they really didn't understand that foundation. And now you're moved on. What do you think about the standards that are put on us as teachers? What happens when our students really don't understand that stuff? It makes us look like we're not doing what we're supposed to. Yet we have students who are all the way up here, students who are all the way down here, students who are right in that middle, how do we hug all of them and get them to a point where they do really understand what's happening? So, barriers to literacy. What is stopping you guys from incorporating as much literacy as you think you should be incorporating into your class? Okay. What else? Background knowledge. Background knowledge. I know for me personally, I don't feel like I get all the support I need. I mean, people are really good about telling me, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And then I try to do all the things, and I really don't even know what I'm doing after a certain point. Right? You lose sight of the content after a little while. And if you're like me, y'all love what you teach. And it's hard when a kid isn't quite getting to that point and you're trying to tell them and you want to teach them all of these cool things and these are all the things that you love and you just can't get there. So when you go to ask somebody and they go, oh, we'll just do this thing. You've been, I've been doing that thing, but it doesn't work. So I don't have enough time. My kids aren't getting it. I have to move on. I have a test I have to do. We have to do it. So incorporating literacy aspects requires too much of my time. Okay, what about the reading classes? Come on. I mean, I teach science. My kids get into my class and they go, 
what do you mean I'm supposed to read? This is science. Oh no, scientists can't talk to each other without writing an article. Scientists can't have to communicate by going to conferences. You've got to read, you've got to write. I'm not supported. Professional developments only help you so much. I know y'all are tired. You feel like you can't be developed anymore. You were just there. But we have to try. And then I've already got something that works. This goes for veteran teachers as well as beginning teachers. We're at a point in the semester, we're at a point in the year, maybe in your teaching style where you're like, this works, don't fix it if it ain't broke, don't reinvent the wheel, all those fun sayings. But sometimes you can 3D print a real wheel and it still works. Sometimes doing a little bit can go a long way. Hence why 15 minutes or less, changing one little thing can make a big difference for a lot of students. Okay? So beyond this, I just want you to reflect a little bit. So is there a way you can modify one area of a lesson to incorporate more literacy? Just think about a lesson you've done recently. Think about a lesson that you're about to teach. How much more time would it take to read something rather than write it out? Could you do both? Could your students draw or illustrate instead of writing? Is there a way that you can change up your lesson to see what you're actually doing? So take those into consideration when we move forward. Let's talk about 15 minute lesson plans. A little bit of background on these. So when I was in school, learning how to be a teacher, because let's be real, your education classes prepare you to get into that classroom. Right. So one of the things that actually stuck with me was one of my professors told me he would do these like skill and drill things. And it was called a 15 minute lesson plan. And we had about five minutes to write this 15 minute lesson plan. And it sounded really odd. And I was really frustrated because all I knew is what Piaget and Vygotsky said. And that's what I wrote, but it, I knew it wouldn't work because all of our kids are different. So he would have us take a content area, take a skill, and we would have to create a lesson plan in 15 minutes. Let's say we needed it for an emergency. Let's say we needed it for a sub or we needed to help somebody else out. 15 minute lesson plans really aren't that effective in that sense. It's a good skill to have. You can whip something up. But most of us know what we're doing. So I took what he said and applied it to modifying an already created lesson or an already created activity. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to take our lesson plans or we're going to take our activity and we're going to modify it slightly. Okay. So how can it help you? Let's talk about what happens in my own room. So these are some examples of things that are in my science classroom. No, it's not an experiment necessarily. I do love experiments. I love hands-on things. But what do you notice mostly about what I've showed you? It's writings and it's illustrations. Because not all of our students can articulate what they know. And I know, y'all, I know there's a test. I know it matters but I want my kids to take this further than that test they're going to have. So this is actually a representation of the cell. So somebody, I guess, had just watched the Smurfs. Um, not that that's new, but I think that was a thing. Um, and they had created a cell city from it. That's a pretty common activity, but I really leave it open for them. Um, down here, we were another example of a cell, which typically you draw out. Um, was just a short, sor uh, a short story. I wanted them to tell me um, about a day in the life of a cell or a day in the life an, or of an organelle. So it says, it was another sunny day, some might say, in the mitochondria, which provides our town energy. The Golgi apparatus mailman came with my packages for my grandma. It had been such a difficult time settling into our new home. Mom told me to open the door for the Vesicles Moving Company. They took out our old furniture and put the new furniture in. I took out my green paint and unpacked my brush to start painting my room. Is that still the right content? Yes. Is that a cute little story? Did I find somebody who could actually write? 
Yes. They embrace the things that you let them embrace. And that's the key. This, um, hopefully this will play. I'm not sure if it been having some issues with the sound. Um, but this is an example of a story that we did Yep, in class. The bark of the alien was tragic from Pluto. In the exosphere, he found floating chicken nuggets. He felt very happy because chicken, and there were chicken nuggets. On the way, he also met the person that the was visiting from Wendy's. They had a great time and bonded chicken nuggets were in their favorite food. The markers traveled through the atmosphere. He saw the northern lights. He was amazed at what he saw. He was really hot, but his face was holding up in the hot temperature. As he was leaving, he remembered how pretty the moon was for his back in front of the moon. While driving his face up in the best he spots some meteor burning up. The market soon realizes how cold it is. It is a sudden change from the heat from the thermosphere. He soon um, starts speeding towards her, hoping to find a finer um, lower temperature. So again, I'll, if you guys want to watch the full video, you'll have access to it in my presentation. Um, but that is just another example of not only incorporating just the bare minimum content, but incorporating the entire class, making sure that they can write creatively. Basically what we did was we came up with an, a name for an alien and they chose DeMarcus and DeMarcus was from whatever world they chose and that was the only thing that was the same. But using the layers of the atmosphere, those don't change. That's content that they need to know. How they need to tell it to me is totally up to them. Sometimes we like to put our kids in little boxes because we're afraid of what we could possibly get from them. But I say open the box. Let them explore a little bit. Keep a rubric general. We're going to talk about rubrics next. And then that way you can really identify if they're truly understanding the content in the long run. Because what you get from students is going to be as broad as you, get, uh, as you let them. And a lot of these kids, I'm sure you've seen some of them, some of them are coders, some of them can use CAD, some of them have designed apps, some of them are really good at movie making. There's a whole bunch of stuff that they can do. Some of them are illustrators. We just have to let them do their thing, okay? All right, let's talk about rubrics for things like this because it may sound odd that I let them draw and make movies and illust or illustrate and write stories. Keep your rubric simple. Um, this is a rubric that I have on my canvas. And um, what do you notice about that rubric? It isn't a lot. <laughs> it's not a lot. Correct grammar and sentences because I want them to write like they're in high school. Submit it on time. I can read a small book that they've given me. This is a student book that I, had, I let them write. This was by two students. It was about the water cycle. I let them do whatever they wanted. I said, look, you have to use 15 words. How you do it, I don't care. They did all of the illustrations. This is all the correct content. Look, I'll be honest with y'all. I'd rather read this on a weekend than read a paper. You know what I'm saying? This fits. Correct grammar and sentences submitted on time. You can add in an extra one content. What do you want them to get out of it? Do you want them to understand content? Do you want them to understand something specific about the content? Maybe I want them to understand their interactions of organelles in a cell. That would be part of my rubric. Be basic. And look for key topics, but it is OK to use instead of exceeds, met, partially meets, does not exceed, met, not met. Don't make it hard for yourself. Can you get them to do something slightly different that would actually take that lesson to the next level? Could you have them create a solar system celestial commercial, which is one thing I just had. They just created a, you guys have seen like the pure Michigan commercials, right? Like visit Michigan, our falls are beautiful. They did that for like Mars. They had to do certain content. They created it. They had a really good time. Some of them probably too much of a good time. They can green screen things. Let, open the box. Open the box and see what you get. Now, if they overshoot the box and it's not gonna work, do something else the next time. But never call it a failure until you get your result and see that if maybe the kid that doesn't talk in your class needs to do something where he can be creative or she can be creative. 
Maybe they need to draw rather than write. Maybe they're self-conscious about how they write or how they draw. Letting them have these options is something that'll make a big difference. So with that being said, we'll talk about a couple of different things and I'm just gonna give it back to you guys because I don't wanna talk at you. I want you to try this. So on your desk, there's two things. One, I've printed out for you. It was also in a bit.ly. Um, so this is something that I use to kind of gauge myself on if I'm creating enough literacy in my lessons. So you can see there's a pretty standard format as far as content and language objectives goes. We've heard the PSYOP term. We do PSYOP all the time. Um, so that is common. PSYOP is one of those strategies that you can use to increase literacy. But beyond that, on the back, I've given you a little bit of a cheat sheet. So do you want your, these are just examples. I want my students to read. Do I want them to read and annotate, read and discuss, read and write? Do I want my students to draw? a thinking map, a picture, an illustration, whatever, okay? I want my students to verbalize. And of course, those are some Bloom's vocabulary. You can interchange that. These are just, just basics. Then on the other page, you'll notice you have a lesson plan. And then on the back, you have an activity along with some cheats. Think about when you're doing these modifications, how can you change or implement cross-curriculum, technology, different Bloom's terms, which is why I'm challenging you with the things that you have on your desk. So your goal is to come out of here with at least one activity and or lesson. I would do an activity there a little bit easier to modify. So you've got a bag of literate, uh, literacy words, you've got a bag of activities or tech tools, and you've got a bag of content. Content is a little bit of a, that's an extra. So I'll talk about these two first. Pull something out of this bag, pull something out of this bag, add it to a lesson you already have or an activity you already have. Can you make that activity better? If you wanna challenge yourself, this can put you across disciplines. So there's math, science, English, and social studies in here. Can you find a way to incorporate not just English, but history? or science into reading or into whatever your class is, okay? If you need help, I'm, I will be walking around kind of giving some advice because this is something that I do just for fun sometimes. Don't ask me why. Um, but open the box. Open the box and let your kids be okay with it. Now, with that being said, this book has rubrics. If you'd like to look at them, this book is all about introducing lessons in inquiry through storytelling. Um, this is a book all about debates from elementary all the way up to college. That is a good way to get your kids involved. All of those skills are literacy skills. A lot of times we only think literacy has to do with reading. It does not. They learn a whole lot of different ways. Let them learn a whole lot of different ways. What questions do you have for me? Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys work. Okay. Give it a shot. See what you can get out of it. You're also going to find that some of them are really odd when they're paired together. How can you modify them to fit the needs of what you've gotten? So like, let's say you have verbalized and something related to Google Docs. Can you do a collaborative story writing where each of your students do popcorn and read it out loud?
How are you guys doing? Um, well, I don't even know where to start because I've literally never written a list of things in my life. It's okay. I'm, I'm like lateral sure. entry. That's fine. Lesson plans are for the birds sometimes. Um, so, so think of it this way. What is one thing that you've done in your class already that you didn't really like? Do you do worksheets? Okay, that's, have you had to give a worksheet though this year? How could you modify that so it wasn't a worksheet? Good? Keep it easy. Keep it easy. It, it's, because at first when you start to do it, you're going to be like, this is never going to work. And then when you do it one time, you're like, okay, maybe the kids like that a little bit. Let me try something else. So be easy, be basic first, and then do a little bit more. How are you guys doing? Do we write it? Is this where we put it? It's up to you. That, that's uh, if you want to use it on there and you want to pretend you're, you're using that into your lesson, this is just an example, but that's why I printed it out, just in case. I'm a writer, so I needed it in front of me. Digital doesn't work. How are you guys doing? Yeah. Can we do a match? area. <laughs> I'm choosing right. my contract. There you go. Are you at a loss? Yeah. Okay, what okay, give me a content area. Teach them all. Pick one <laughs> pick one that you're struggling. Yeah, pick one that your students struggle with the most. Oh well writing. Okay. All right, let's do writing. All right. I got collaborative writing for Okay. Collaborative writing and they need to illustrate it. <laughs> Can you have your kids use a Google Doc which will track their writing? and have them write a sentence at a time. Not right now. Okay. January, maybe. Could you have them write it on a piece of paper? Right now we're learning our letter sound. There you go. So, <laughs> right, well, but so that's, so collaborative writing. Could be collaborative reading instead. Could be collaborative video making. You could do a 20 second video. Her partner could do a 20 second video. Okay, that kind of thing. So even though they're, even though it's like, oh, absolutely not, my kids cannot do that. Can we modify it to fit a video or drawing, or could you give them half of an illustration? They could draw and like see song mm -hmm. and then video themselves collaboratively talking about their picture or something. Like right. Mm -hmm. So then you've got three layers of literacy right there. How are you guys doing? Good. What can I help with? Are you struggling with anything? Do you have, like, did you get any cards that you were like, absolutely, no, this is not going to work for my kids? <laughs> I'm a music teacher as a K-1. Perfect. Um, my first thing that I was thinking of was actually, like, a new activity that mm -hmm. I came up with an idea for. Okay. So I'm struggling to add it into something I'm already doing. Okay. So what, what's your new activity? So I got comment book and evaluate. So I was thinking, since they really struggle with reading anything, right? Um, I was thinking of having like illustrations up with the words underneath it, mm -hmm. and then possibly picking like a piece of music to match that, and then saying like, if you look at the picture, what do you think is happening? Mm -hmm. What music sounds like it would go along with that? Yeah, you can also so book. The, the reason I chose comic book is because. People don't really, the kids don't really recognize what a comic strip is anymore because yeah. nobody reads a newspaper, right? So they know books, though. So you could always do this as a comic strip and then maybe take a piece of music that you're learning and have them put that into the comic strip and then see if they can do something underneath it or maybe they can digitally talk about it or whatever. So there's, I mean, I think that's a great idea. Or you could take something you've already done and then apply that to what you might be teaching them. Maybe, uh, you said music, right? Is it chorus or a band? Neither. Both. It's general Perfect. So maybe about instruments. Maybe the sounds that instruments make based on what they look like. Things like that. Or illustrate like 
if you had to make this instrument a person, what would it look like? What would he look like? That kind of thing. What else? Cinnamon. Hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, I've got Google Docs. I'm not to... Okay. I'm trying to figure out how I can work these into my enlightenment salon. Okay. Where the children have to research an enlightenment philosopher and then they have to sit around and have a salon and discuss. Could you have them use a single Google Doc in a group and write so you could track how they're writing? as they write through it, evaluating that philosopher? I could, but... Is that too messy for you? A, a different activity. But, well, the skill would be having them discuss it with each other. Okay. Versus, because most of what they do is write. Mm -hmm. So... Is there a different way that you can have them discuss it with each other? I think maybe I'll pick another topic. That would that would fit more with like evaluating and Google Docs. It's not philosophy. Philosophy. I mean, that's basically how I live my life right now. So. Yeah. I really want to like go through this and um, find others that. So with my AP Euro class, I want to find ways to have them use more of like illustrating things. Mm -hmm. Because we read and write, and read and write, and read and write. And read Comic write. books are good. So um, I'll, that's, I wish I had a comic book. <laughs> you can get a comic book. <laughs> yes. If you. Guys, don't feel like you're totally wrapped up in that one area. If you want to pull out, like if you see somebody's got comic book and you're like, I want comic book, just pull it out. It's fine. It's fine. Because if you have, like, I, I, again, I'm open the box, man. Like if you feel like a comic book is what's going to work, do a comic book or do a comic strip. Um, funny you said that because I pull a comic, comic book. So I'm about to teach law <laughs> of conservation of matter. Perfect. And I'm thinking I put different examples in a baggie and they mm -hmm. could select um, those different examples. Like mm -hmm. um, if you take a, a car apart, it still weighs the same. Right. Um, so they can do that and then just illustrate that in a comic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Here, I'll give you an example real quick. So um, I have, uh, they have some of these for physical science. I have them for a ton of different, uh, this is one of the biology ones, okay. but this is a professionally done comic book that has all of the things for plagues. So Louis Pasteur, um, different types of chemicals and bacterial, um, understanding that's a whole bunch of different stuff. So you have a bunch that you can do. What's up? I was wondering, I'm going to show up like to help you. No, it's fine. I can do it. I passed around their thing. Okay. So. Yeah, absolutely. There you go. So that took them, that was one of their hydrosphere projects. So it took them, I would say about two weeks, so about 10 days total to do it. But they were doing that on their own as well. How did you go? I teach Read 180. Awesome. Here. Um, so the, one of the lessons that we just did was about picking out, using sight um, evidence for the key ideas. Yes. Um, so being that I'm scripted mm -hmm. Read 180, but mm -hmm. just doing the illustrations, mm -hmm. um, we try to do as much with apps as we can. By yeah. Having them to like with um, chatter picks and yes. things just so yeah. they can record. Mm -hmm. um, but just here, what I picked out evaluate. Awesome. And so I was just like... <laughs> The key idea, they can come up with a debate or like some type of way to say, this is my proof. Yes. Put it in a different format. It's just saying, okay, I'm just going to write it down. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Wilson, help me out. <laughs> You're my helper. Yeah, your helper. My bad. <laughs> know what? I got help. That's fine. Just hang out. Just hang out. We're... I, didn't real I didn't realize Wilson was going to keep us over 30 minutes. You never should have had practice right now. <laughs> you got, we got just chill, just chill, uh, <laughs> just chill, man, just chill, man. But good, yeah, that's a great yeah. idea. Having always having them support with their findings and having them discuss with each other makes a huge difference. I mean, you can really find out what those kids know and what they don't.
Um, let me... So, this is the attendance. Mm -hmm. And then, so you're gonna basically find out who is who and sign them in. Right. Um, just check them off or um, what. How are you doing? I'm good. And I haven't come back over here. It's okay. It's all right. Have you found one that you can work with? I think so. So I'm in an interesting position in that I am teaching EC online. Okay. Um, and I just started two weeks ago, so we're behind. That's We've got to like, get through it. Right. Um, but we don't meet every day. Right. For digital learning plan. Right. So I meet with her once a week for 30 minutes. Okay. So it's super fun. So I have to do things that are easily accessible. Yep. And she can do relatively on her own. Yes. Because I see her for once. Right. A week for 30 minutes. Right. Um, but I think I've got something because we're getting ready to start um, module A, I guess it is. So I think what I'm going to do is have her create a recipe a okay recipe card yeah the there you go so i think so easy easy yeah yep and that'll give you a good idea if she un really understands those steps and how to do that she'll be able to break them down and sometimes i mean and that's a, another good way to look at it as far as how many recipe cards does she have you know is she making putting too much on one and just you you know is she making those steps understandable for herself you know and then how to how to go through that i mean i think that's a great one you could also have her illustrate it a little bit or, or write it draw it in a different way there's a ton of ways to do it yes <laughs> don't be stressed out so we're getting ready to start like the American Revolution. So we're sure. Start out with why, what motivated mm -hmm. the explorers to come to the New World. So I was Perfect. Thinking, before, like I did something basic, like they made a little um, portfolio or whatever of mm -hmm. different things. But now I just want should I go more in depth, or is that too basic? Or no, I, I mean sometimes starting really simple, starting really basic and then giving them maybe something like a book to make mm -hmm. and giving them a couple of days to do it um, is okay. Um, because then, you know, they're, let's be real. We, we love to teach all of the things. We want to teach all of the content things, but there are always some that probably are secondary to what is the most important. So can you get them to do the comic book or do a book in such a way that they might, through their research, have to look at those secondary things mm -hmm. that maybe you wouldn't have to teach at that point. Okay. So um, what do you say? Like, I don't know, go look it up. Like, <laughs> so, like yeah, so you can, so, yeah, I don't, more like, I don't know, go look it up, but not on Wikipedia. Right, right, right. Um, giving them the research. Right. Well, and see, and that's one of those things, too. So giving them you know, some instructions in the rubric, like make sure you're looking up these terms, T keep in these key terms. So like maybe you're talking about certain events leading up to whatever you're discussing. And then they have to really kind of go like, okay, well I have to, I have to look at this word, but we didn't talk about that word. Mm -hmm. And then they're kind of secondary having to do those things that you would normally do in a lesson. Okay. So rather than you telling them what it is, mm -hmm you're kind of just shoving them in the right direction. And then you can always come around and go like, mm -mm, that's not right. <laughs> go to this website, that kind of thing. Okay. But yeah. Still good? Good, okay. Yeah, of course. How are you guys doing? I didn't mean to interrupt, sorry. <laughs> Did you start looking at other ones? Do you have any ideas on maybe what you would do? Well, we kind of talked about all of them together. Okay. 
Are you comfortable with maybe using them? I mean, sometimes it's like, yeah, I'll never use this in my life. But sometimes I'll never use it turns into, I'll give it a try. Sometimes it's okay to try it and fail it. You'd be surprised at what the kids can do. I got some super weird celestial commercials. They were great to watch. They were super weird. Are we done at 150? Is that what this is? At two? Oh, perfect. Okay. So I may be able to let you guys out a little bit early. Um, I want to. I don't want to stop the conversations because I do hear them going on. Does anybody have anything that they want to share? Like, what content are you in? And then maybe what did you grab from this, or what could you use going out? Some of you guys had some really, really good ideas. Somebody, point at somebody at your table and make them talk. I love how stuff like that happens. Sure, go ahead. So um, share your content area. Share maybe what you've done in the past and then what you're going to do with that moving forward. Um, my name is Susanna White. I teach math and science at the intermediate school, fifth graders. Um, next, we are teaching uh, law of conservation and matter. And I have grabbed that I'm going to do a comic book um, and have them first create the comic book and then verbalize that. Um, just kind of read it to their peers or in a group and then maybe even record them so that they can see it later, like a little closer to testing time um, to help them review. Um, before, I would just uh, go over like school net questions in fun ways, like posting them around the room, mm -hmm. find the same book. Right, right, right. right. Um, so that's normally how I do it, mm -hmm. but I think they'll appreciate more of an activity mm -hmm. than um, the question answer. Right, right, which we're so, we're, it's so beat into us, right? Like, they have to know how to test, like, teach them how to answer these questions. Yes. So, like, how can we do that differently where they're still going to understand that content? Does anybody else want to share what you guys have? I'm sad. That's okay. Yeah? I think I'm reading my age here at middle school, um, so I'm thinking... But um, we were working on picking out PID units, and I picked up from the um, Blue Taxonomy um, evaluating. Mm -hmm. And so, when looking at the description, I'm like, oh my goodness, we can, I can get my kids to take a stance of this is why I chose this mm -hmm. to in another format. They can't illustrate it, mm -hmm. or do like um, PID for dummy. Mm -hmm. And so that they can provide the evidence as to this is how, and then teach someone else this is how to find. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Having your kids read to each other, defend their ideas, even just when it's really basic concepts, like even if you're going to have the same defense, and I say that like with air quotes, right? Because sometimes students are going to find some obscure thing to defend with. Um, but since you'll have the same defense, it's really easy for the student that they're working with to go like, but wait, that's not what I found or wait, like, didn't we talk about this? And to help their peers really work through that. But they wouldn't see that normally because like when we were in school, you took your paper, gave it to her, she read it, you read somebody else's paper. Now we don't do that. Now it's a, well, if that kid gets it, that kid gets it. So how can we get them to talk about it, read about it, write about it, draw about it, and use all of these literacy things? Um, so since we are supposed to end it too, I, I don't feel, I think you guys got a lot um, accomplished, at least some of you did, um, and definitely have things that you can move forward with. Um, so what I want to do is I want to leave a little bit of space for you to come up and investigate some of the things that I have up here, maybe give yourself um, some things to look at on Amazon. Um, and then if you want to leave out and run to the bathroom, um, I don't want you guys to have to stay in here. But um, if you need me, you can email me, and then you can always follow my class on Twitter. But um, thank you, guys. I appreciate everything that you've done, and I, I hope you got something out of it um, that you can use. So thank you, guys. If you need me, I'll be up here. Um, just push Noah out of the way. Thank you. Of course.